Hi, welcome to City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And uh, the mayor has uh, brought a special guest, Irina Keefe, who is the Director of Sustainability for the City of Beverly. Mayor Mike, welcome. Hey, Walt, good to see you. And Irina, welcome. Thank you. And as you can see, we're not in the studio today. We're here at beautiful Aubert Park on a kind of an overcast day, but it still is uh, quite pleasant here in Aubert Park. And we're gonna be talking today about trash and recycling and how uh, the city of Beverly deals with it and more importantly, how we as citizens who put our trash out by the curb should uh, deal with it. So uh, I understand that uh, we have a new five-year contract with, uh, with a new waste hall. Is it still JRM? Still or? JRM. Okay, so it's JRM and it's a new contract is it new in substance or it's just another five-year contract under the old conditions? Um, it's, everything's new. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, now... You want a couple details? Oh, uh, yeah. What, like, I, I, I think from my research, so what, it's about a million and a quarter dollars, uh, a million and a quarter uh, So, sure. Year. I mean, we, we had a good contract and, and it really, you know, benefited the city, particularly the last couple of years of it. Um, we knew that when we negotiate a new contract, we're going to see rising costs for the, the per tonnage tipping fee right. of trash. We also, for the first time ever, are paying a, 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 a per tonnage fee for recycled material. And so what we learned is we, we really need to pull materials out of the waste stream. So we need to compost more because right. that food waste is just going in as trash. It's heavy. It's getting burned at the, at the uh, incinerator in Saugus. We're paying, we're going to be paying $93 a ton this year as opposed to $69 a ton last year, okay? So we need to pull more out of the trash part of the stream. Yeah. So we need to pull composting out. We need to recycle better because we learned when we went to the recycling facility in Peabody that JRM owns that we have about a 20 to 25% contamination rate in our recycling stream. And when there's too much contamination in a truckload, they end up taking that truckload over to the incinerator. So $60 a ton for recycling or 93 for trash. Yep. So the better we recycle, the less we spend, the less it costs the taxpayer. And when you say contamination, Mike, what exactly do you mean contamination? That so, we're, not, we're not segregating the things the way we should be? So we're going to get to that in a few minutes. That's oh, okay. where Arena's going to, I think, give you a little bit of a quiz on what wow. can and cannot be recycled <laughs> and, and, and all of that. Okay. Now, you, uh, now are there any... any um, uh, do we, does, the, does the people, the citizens of Beverly, who throw their trash out, do they know, uh, need to know anything different than what they've been doing sort of in the past, or, 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 or are we still doing the same sorts of things? No, it's, it's the same program in that everybody needs to recycle, so they should put their recycling out each week, each week along with their trash. Um, the still limits, it's, it's a, a 234 gallon trash barrel limit for trash. Um, we have a dual stream recycling program, which I'll just quickly say, people question why JRM maybe puts it all in one part of the truck or in yeah. one truck. When you keep your paper cardboard separate from everything else for up to seven days at your home, you're keeping that product, which is valuable, the cardboard and the paper especially, you're keeping it from getting contaminated by some food materials that might still be in that that you know, tomato paste can mm -hmm. or that, you know, that juice bottle or whatever. Um, and so the contamination is still much lower than communities that, that do single stream, which is why we do the dual. Yeah. So it's still the same program in that sense. Yeah. Um, okay. We do offer composting for people who want to pay extra to do it at the curb with private vendors. We're trying to figure out how to offer that to everybody without charging extra. It's something we're working on. We agreed we'd get the contra contract in place and then really go to work on that over the next year to try to figure that out because the more food we can pull out of and, and, yep. and either actively compost or potentially contract with a, um, um, what's the term I always forget it? Anaerobic okay. digester. Sure. <laughs> Any different way to, to, to compost food waste is better than putting it in the trash. Now let's, let's talk about, Irina, maybe you can tell us, I know that we had a, a pilot program that we kicked off in like 2015 for food composting. Can you tell us how that's evolved and how many people are participating now in the food composting and what maybe what the city has in the future? Sure, so originally our Beverly Waste Reduction Committee had partnered with 
uh, black earth compost to do a pilot citywide that was a few years ago, 2015, 15, 16. I believe, yeah. Mm. Yep, and um, it was successful. It involved people putting their food scraps in a bio bag or a paper bag and bringing it out to the curb and black earth um, drove around and did curbside pickup. Since then, we now have 1,400 households participating. That's almost a tenth of all of the households that we have in Beverly um, that have opted in to this optional service. Um, and that's just through Black Earth. So there's other vendors that also serve Beverly, including Bootstrap Compost, City Compost, which is not City of Beverly Compost. Um, so people have a lot of options right now to be opting into that compost program. And um, as Mayor mentioned earlier, we do want to remove as much food waste as possible from the trash stream because we know it, it it's heavy, right? It can take up 20% of the right. kind of tonnage of your of your household trash. Okay, and are we making any changes to that uh, the composting program now, or is it more or less the way it was set up in, in 2015? So there's more options now, and then we had been exploring this opportunity for a long-term um, expansion to curbside pickup for everyone in the community. We're still looking into it. Yeah. So overall, Irina, how how is the city of Beverly doing in it in its recycling practices? How what what, what rate would you would you give the city of <laughs> residents? Yeah. So we. We went to an audit at the recycling facility Greenworks in Saugus and saw about 800 pounds of, tra of uh, recycling dumped out in front of us. So there were a handful of city employees there. Um, and we watched the crew kind of pick everything uh, out of the recycling that was considered to be contamination. Our contamination rate at the time was 25%. And we've seen that kind of consistently month over month for the past couple of years. Okay. And is that 25% based on the weight of, of the, the Exactly, of it's the based material? on the weight. And we know that some communities that have had a, a strong educational campaign have gotten their con contamination numbers down significantly. So this is sort of the start of our city's uh, educational program. Right. Now I, I myself, my wife and I have been composting even before the city started. We do our own, comp we have a composter out in the backyard. Now are you aware, uh, are there any statistics that the city has as to how many people privately do that and don't have the city, the city containers that they put out for the city to pick up? I haven't no? seen any data yeah. on that, but I know that we are um, looking into offering incentives for people to um, purchase home composting bins in the backyard. So that's another thing that's on the table. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, uh, I know that uh, the city and its website has a, a seven page list alphabetically of things, stuff that could potentially end up in the trash and it gives you uh, w where to do it, where to take it. What, what are some of the most confusing items? Where did you find the most confusion of people that don't know really what to do with what kind of stuff? Yeah, so we actually will be going through some of that momentarily. Oh. Um, some of the big offenders we've we've brought today to, to go through. The issue is that um, recycling is a it's a dynamic market. So the um, rules change, the protocols and the best practices change over time. And so as um, good you know consumers of materials and as good stewards of our environment, we kind of have this responsibility to pay attention and learn and adapt to those new protocols. So it is confusing and we can go through that quiz in a minute. Okay, well, uh, if, you're, if you're ready for that quiz, maybe we can do that. I mean, you're gonna put me on the spot. Is that <laughs> it? You so are, I'm, I'm glad I'm she's not giving it to me. <laughs> you, can, you, can, uh, you can whisper some hints from the side if you'd like. Okay, so uh, uh, Kim Alline, uh, our, uh, uh, our studio associate today, or our park associate is gonna, uh, what, hand me some stuff, and then I'm gonna look at it and, and say where, where it should go, correct? Is that how yeah, we're gonna Yeah, and you know, we can, we can start with the jar of nuts that we've uh, yes. stolen from Mayor Cahill's office. Okay. Okay, so but it has to come back to me. Yeah. So th this is, as I see it, this has got a, a, a plastic top and it's kind of a metal with that. So I, w if I were me, I would put this in my recyclable bin that I have at home. Yep. So we are we are going through the most confusing items today. So if your success rate on these questions is low, that's not your fault. It's because it's, a, okay, it's kind so, of a difficult practice. All right, so, this is trash. Oh, it is trash. And it's trash because there's multiple materials here. You've got paper along the outside. You've got a metal bottom and then this plastic piece we think you can actually recycle. Yeah. Okay. Um, so but it that's is. It. Yep, so that's part it. of the plastic top. Yep. So the plastic top could go in, into my recycles, recycle bin. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So, yeah, can, so for, yeah, sure. I'll come up. So for plastic recycling, Generally, the rule of thumb is to look for things that are in containers or jugs, um, and everything else beyond that is um, not considered recyclable. Yep. We're going to start with an easy one. Okay, this is an easy one, and this this is this is cardboard, and I have a big uh, black bin and cardboard, paper, uh, newspapers, different things like that. 
would go into into that big one. So I don't know which one of these is, is the one. This one? Yeah. Okay, so I would put I would put my cardboard into my my cardboard and paper bin. Is that? I mean, I don't want to I don't want to stump you, but how much do we have to pay attention to pulling off the tape? Um, yeah, that's not as much as I do it at home. So I think it's good practice to do, but it's not going to ruin our stream if you don't remove all of the, yeah. the plastic tape. Okay. Okay, and then here is a. We're going to get a little bit tougher as we go. Okay. Three materials that are similar. Yeah. You've got bubble tape here. Yeah. Bubble wrap. Okay. Well, um, typically, um, I, I, bubble wrap might go into the recyclables, but I'm, I'm told that stuff, this isn't a, pla a plastic bag or like a, a bag from a, from, a, from a cleaners or, or something you might get your fruits and vegetables in, but so um, I, would, I would put that into my recyclables. Mayor Cahill? <laughs> I don't know. I had oh. to do that. <laughs> so the bubble wrap actually is trash. Any kind of film plastic, so plastic okay, so that, that you can stretch, into trash. is okay. trash. The okay. other option that we have here is to put it in this other bin because grocery stores, including in Beverly, Whole Foods, Stop and Shop Shaw's, they all accept film plastics. Right. Um, from So this is just a, a package. I'm giving away this one. You can stretch it. You can um, collect all of yours in a bag, bring it to the grocery store as other. Otherwise, it's trash. You cannot recycle any of those items. So if it's a plastic bag, uh, you would put it into the trash and not put it into the recyclables. As I understand it, it gets clogged in the machinery that, that, uh, at the recyclables It's plant. not a high quality plastic, not, right? Okay. okay. Right. However, the test is really to stretch. So here is plastic wrap. Okay. It might go over an electronic that you buy and yet it's not considered film plastic that can be turned back into things like grocery bags. So can this be that recycled? That is trash. Oh, this is trash as well. That's trash trash, yep. So which one is trash? <laughs> so, Arena, when, when people <laughs> retain some of this, when people retain some of this but forget some of it, where can they look? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, plenty of resources on our website. I know, Walt, you mentioned seven pages of guidelines for how to find things. That can sound complicated. So there's one very simple tool that we have at the top of our um, trash and recycling webpage called the Recyclopedia. And you enter in the name of an item. So if you search for batteries, for example, you can find all of the different ways to recycle different types of batteries. Oh, oh I want to talk about batteries. Let's talk about batteries. Okay, so I, I know you that- You might want to zoom in for this one. I know that <laughs> alkaline batteries, like the, the, the AA, AAA, Cs and Ds, you can put that in regular trash. Correct. And, and, a, and a nine a nine volt. So these can be in. now the uh, I know that that the uh, the lithium um, uh, batteries have to be uh, sent separately. That you you can you can take those to like a a, a, a store like a um, what uh, one, one, one of the Best Buy. Best Buy, Staples. Staples, and you can take those to them. So, so the regular ones you can do regular trash, which is which is over the, here. This is the okay. That's that's the regular trash. And there's one is that, that drops right? between you. And the, is that um, right? Yes, they can be they can be trashed. There are options, like you said, locally to um, dispose of them in a way that's not going to be incinerated. Yep. And that could be bringing to a Best Buy, a Staples. Um, locally, there's some shops that use. TerraCycle bins to help direct um, things like batteries to um, better disposal practices. Unpacked Living downtown has one of those boxes for the public to use. Uh, the last is a button battery that fell right through the cracks there. That is um, electronics based too. That cannot go in your regular trash. Okay. It releases mercury. Okay. All right. We so looked at a lot of. Can we talk about yeah. like electronics? So I, I do believe that the um, the Watch city. Watch this. A little dirty the, on the underside. I, I do believe that the city of Beverly every year has an electronics uh, collection and they usually do it at the high school and so like uh, tv monitors uh, or computers and different things like that electronic things you can take over there and i think there's a slight charge five or ten dollars depending upon the item and you can do that right you can't just put this in the trash you cannot put it in the trash um, there are local um, shops again that will accept your old electronic devices and still find value in them. So that old laptop might have a hard drive that has some raw materials that could be reused again. Circuitry Recycling downtown is um, one that does accept uh, electronics. Okay, and pizza boxes, and pizza boxes. I guess if they're clean, can go right in with the with the paper 
and and the cardboard, correct? Very good. Yes. If they're clean. And if they're clean. Well, so. it's okay as long as you empty it of food. They're not going to open up every single pizza box. Yeah. But if there's no food in it, get that uh, really greasy disc that's on the inside of uh, pizza boxes out, then it's recyclable. Okay. And this is one that has changed, so people might still be thinking that you have to throw this away in the trash, but yeah. it's accepted now. And I guess uh, I guess the city likes it. If you sometimes we get packages uh, <coughs> shipped to us that where the cardboard box is very large, and they, they like that to be kind of compacted and 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 folded down to like a three feet by three feet or so. The longest dimension is about three feet. Is that is that you got right? It. So it's not too. It has to be small enough that they can pick it up and put it in the Put truck. it into that. Right. And that it will fit in your, preferably fit in your And I see some paint here. Yeah. Let me, let me, let's talk so about paint. So if let's it's, take a look at the difference between okay. these two paints. Yeah. And I'll let now, you do that. Um, one is an acrylic. And I believe that acrylics, you can actually um, open the top and let it dry. And it, and it forms, it uh, forms whatever, it, it kind of dries out. And then you can actually put this out with the regular trash uh, with the top off uh, after it dries. Is that correct? Wow, stellar. Did you? Uh, yeah, you right. got it. But That's oil, acrylic I think, I think Kim only. was doubting you. He was shaking his head. Well, isn't that oil-based acrylic? Um, no, acrylic is like a plastic, or it's yeah. like latex plastic. Yeah. So but oil this, based. as long as it's dry, but you, you actually got a really important point there. Keeping the lid off to show the people who are picking up your trash that you have done a good job of drying it out. You know, it's close to empty. You're not throwing out yeah. full cans. Right. And if it's oil-based, again, I think the, uh, the city does have um, uh, uh, a recycling uh, option that it has at the high school and you can bring things in. And I, I learned that the hard way because I took a bunch of paint cans, uh, paint with me, and some of them, I, I, some of it I could, they took and some of it they, they didn't. So I learned, I learned that lesson. And, and we offer those periodically and we, we need, we're looking to try to offer them more frequently. Yep. You know, the, the electronics is one day, the hazardous waste is another day. Yep. Um, so the, you, people can look to the website, to the city website for that. Where do they find the recycling information? Homepage of the website, what do you see? You go to the trash and recycling page. There's a bunch of sub web pages for all the information that you want to know. If you want to see the seasonal um, or holiday collection schedules, if you want to kind of search for some of these harder materials, look for the hazardous um, household waste events that are typically in April. Yeah. Um, and also you can call the health department if you want to know, or sorry, trash and recycling, if you want to know what other uh, events are taking place in nearby communities. Right. And, and, and styrofoam, it, it's good to talk about styrofoam because some people would put this because they think it's, it's a plastic, that this would be in the recyclables. But styrofoam should be put in the regular trash, I understand. Is that correct? Unfortunately so, you and, are correct. And that, there's a lot of that because when you, when you receive packages and you get the electronic equipment or other things, that, that is shipped to you, very often that is cushioning material and your product is cushioned in that and then put into a, into a cardboard container. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have the option to buy materials that are not packaged in styrofoam, please I'll do so. It. Okay, so what else do we have here? Okay, we, we already talked about some film plastics. Here we go. Okay, so to me, this would be a plastic, it's a yogurt container. To me, this would be a recyclable plastic, and that's why I would put it in my recyclable bin. And it's clean. There's no foil on top that's already been removed and treated as trash. So this is, yes, regular recycling. This goes in your plastic bin. That's okay with the label on it. It's okay with the label on it. Yeah. And uh, I think there's some... Okay, so this is a handful oh. Oh, I know this. of shredded paper. I know this one. I know this one. So. So if you have a shredder at home and you shred things, you would think that you could put this in with the, with the paper. But what they advise you to do is, is when you empty your shredder, put it into a plastic bag or a, a paper bag, like a grocery bag, and put this into the regular trash. Is that right? Regular trash is correct. The paper is too small to um, be registered by the uh, sensors. Similarly, anything smaller than a credit card, so if you look at those like little you know, receipts or other scraps of paper, cannot be recycled. So anything smaller than a credit card is a good rule of thumb. That is trash. And um, so this looks like a, um, like a this is a, a coffee, a latte coffee. I and it's metal, plastic, so I would put this into my recyclables. So, 
Yes, this is a can, it's a tin can, so it can be in the recyclables. However, this one has a sneaky plastic cap on top. You Ooh. gotta remove anything, you oh. know, including those like six pack um, plastic holders. Uh, this is trash. Yep, and that's can recycling. recycling. And then this is a, a tea, and this is, this, is, this is basically paper, and that would go into the, Easy the paper and the cardboard and, and things like that. Here's some spam with a plastic window. Spam with a plastic window. Oh, you spam, you mean this is mail, spam mail with a spam plastic mail. window. Oh boy, you got me. I, I would put this into, into, into here. I'm, I'm probably oh. wrong on that, Irina. You got it. Oh, yeah. it is? With you, the window? You so, do not need to remove the window. The, the plastic window. Okay, so any yep. kind of uh, direct mail or, or, or junk well. mail. So junk <laughs> mail would go. Would junk go with, mail goes with your paper recycling. And, um, Okay, and an egg egg carton. So that would simply this would go in here as well because this is this yes. is paper, correct? This is made out of cardboard, so this can be recycled. You can crush it up to save yourself a little bit of space. However, some people buy their eggs in plastic cartons. Those can also be recycled as plastic. The ones that are in styrofoam containers, however, are trash. Styrofoam is always trash. Okay. Um, okay, for you. Um, Again, I would. This this is a, a plastic bottle, and I, I think probably you would strip off the paper um, and put that in with the with the paper. How big is it? Oh, how big is it? Oh no, maybe this would go in regular trash. It is regular trash. Regular yes. trash, and this plastic part would be recyclable even with the cap, right? Yes. They're both plastic. Good point. So the reason you would screw the cap on is because if you throw this in your recycling separately, it's too small, it's gonna fall through the grates at the recycling facility and it won't be recycled. So keep your lids on your container once you empty them. Arena, Walt took the, the label off. People don't need to do that, do they? I don't think so. I feel like it's, it's a always, lot of extra work and, yeah. and that's what we're trying to make sure people know, people do their recycling. So if we're, yeah. if we're not 100% sure, we can get back to Walt. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we go. A couple jars. What's the difference between these two jars? We have a mustard and a strawberry jam. Uh, well, mustard would go on your hot dog and strawberry jam would go uh, on your toast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, I would say that uh, there, to me there's really no difference. I, I would, this one is clean, there that's you go. where you're going to, and this one still has some residue in it. So that's right. what I always do at home is I always run it under the sink and slosh it around to get as much of that residue on. Mm -hmm. But then again, these would be, I think, is that the recyclable yep. one? And that, and I would put that into recyclables. Yes, these After are both it. recyclable materials, but first you gotta rinse it out. So get rid of that, you know, that residue here. Right. Give it a good shake, maybe with a little bit of soap, and then it's recyclable. Okay, and... And the cap on that is, is fine. The cap on that is fine, yes. Um, okay, this is a little spray ball. This might, might have had shampoo in it or some kind of stuff, but um, again, after rinsing it out, I would put this into the recyclables unless I'm wrong about this top and this bottom, but I would put this in the recyclables. I keep trying to trick you, Walt, and you're really, you're really killing it here. This is a jar, it's plastic, so it's generally going by that rule of thumb for plastics. This is recyclable. Remove the top because there's other pieces in here. There's some springs, it's made out of different types of plastic. This is trash. That goes in the trash. Yep. Okay. Let's take, take a look at some of this. All right. <laughs> well, first of all, first, okay. before we unwrap anything, what if someone puts this outside in their recycling bin? Um, I. Well, again, I think it's, it's, it's like a plastic bag, right? It would be the same thing as a plastic bag, so this should go in trash? Yeah, so one, one of the biggest offenders that we find in, um, the, in our recycling is that people are putting bags of recycling, so either in paper bags or plastic bags, that are filled with stuff in their bin. In the bin. So we don't like that uh, because you don't know, they can't see what's inside of it, so sometimes those are just picked up and treated as trash. Okay. So always, always, always just put your items loose in your bin. Okay. Okay. All right. Which of these is recyclable? Uh, the plastic is recyclable, and this would be paper. This is trash? Uh, no, I would put that in paper. Would, wouldn't it, isn't that paper? No? It's plastic lined, it's, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is it plastic lined? It's oh, lined, I didn't, yep. didn't know that. That and was just then paper. Okay. Mm. This plastic cup can be recycled. There's a lid in here somewhere that fell off. Oh, here we go. It's another one. Okay. 
Um, the lid here is made out of a different type of plastic, same with the straw. Neither of these are recyclable. They're not in the form of a jar or container. The lid is trash, cups from Dunkin' Donuts or wherever it can be recycled. Now, let me ask you, I know that there's, a, it, there's usually a, a triangle on, on a plastic container or whatever, and inside there's a number and numbers from one to seven are recyclable. So are you saying that that top there is not a, a, a one to seven uh, because it's not recyclable? I don't see a number on this particular uh, lid. Generally speaking, that used to be the case. You used to say ones and twos are recyclable. You know, you can put one through five in your bin. Those rules um, are changing more. So a more, an easier rule of thumb to remember is the jugs, the containers, the food containers are recyclable. Okay. So yeah. how so, so, so paying less attention to is it a good practice then any kind of top you would put in trash but the container of the plastic container itself would go in in the recyclable um, if it's something like uh, the water bottle where these are kind of one piece that can stay on yeah okay yeah okay okay then. let's do these guys um, Okay, I mean, looking at these, um, I, I would put these, this is a number one. I can see the, the little triangle. Verify me, that's a one. It's a one. That's a one. And then this is a, this is a plastic as well. So again, if it had food in it, if you, if you had a delivery with food in it, I would rinse it up. But I would put this in, in recyclables and I would put that in recyclables. Yeah, so this is, this is a confusing one. The clamshell plastic, like you said, it's a number one. This is, this is good once you clean it out from your food. The black plastic is another big contaminant of the recycling stream because this color, the black plastic, um, cannot be recognized by the sensors on the black conveyor belt. So this bottom is trash. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So That's I think there's a lot of education involved. Do you recommend that people have sort of like a little guide next to their <laughs> to their trash in their well, in their we, garage? We, we're, we we do. I think I think you know we in our contract with JRM they've got to do some educational work with us each year, and so we've got these neighborhood meetings coming up. They're virtual, we'll call them neighborhood. Yeah. And you know we we put something in the uh, in the water and sewer bills starting this this month going out which mostly send people to our website and yeah. the various materials that can help. But they might take something off the website and print it and put it in the fridge as well. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'm being told by, by Matt that we have uh, just a couple minutes left. Um, what, now, there are some activities that are coming up uh, um, with regard to recycling and trash that the city is conducting. Maybe can, can we talk about those before we... Do this we, first. Or, I think this okay. is a, an important one. Okay. okay. We, have a, we have a couple more specialty items oh, to show. okay, okay. Here is a pair of shoes. Doesn't fit you anymore, it got dirty, it's torn. What do you do with them? I would give them a the goodwill. Okay, so if they are in good condition, these happen to be in perfectly fine condition, you can donate them. Okay. You can you know, give them to a thrift, thrift store or a consignment shop. Um, or if they are in poor condition, you can recycle your shoes at a textile collection bin um, all around the city. We have bins at all of the public schools and the parking lots. Um, there are Planet Aid boxes that are at the grocery stores, help see bins um, elsewhere around the city. So, Yeah, let me say something about that. So. If you've got clothes that are that are gently used, that somebody you look at and say somebody could enjoy these who needs them, go to bootstraps with them, Beverly Bootstraps. Yeah. But if they're not really clothes that are that can still be worn, then you go to the the textile boxes. And those boxes being at the schools, some of the proceeds from that go to our local PTOs. And so those are a couple of really good options. Yeah. And there's a whole long list of what you can recycle as textiles, right? Yeah. Teddy bears, belts, hats. Now, I know there's... Uh, Which maybe, also can be found on our website. Yeah. Yes. And Irina, talk about like building materials, pieces of, 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 uh, of uh, plaster or, you know, things from, 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 from uh, construction. Uh, those things cannot be thrown in the regular trash, can they? So we're really focusing on residential practices for today. Okay. Um, I think a lot of the build, it really varies depending on the type of material. If it's yeah. metal, for example, you could scrap it. We can do another show on the harder to use kind of from a home project yeah. and white goods and things like yeah, that. that. We can certainly a, do that. There's a lot of, okay, so right now we're, we're concentrating on we that. We could okay. call that Walt's This Old House. 
<laughs> okay, so quickly, we have about a minute left. So tell us about the the uh, the things that the city is doing to educate uh, our 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 citizens about trash. Yeah, so we're going to have a series of recycling meetings with the community coming up. The first one's going to take place on September 30th. The next two are on October 12th and October 14th. Um, and we invite everyone from um, the, the city to attend those. And then the library has a similar session like this on Zoom. It's a workshop on the 27th as part of Climate Protection Week. And um, last we have, what else is left? Those are sort of the big ones for now. And then okay. there's a home composting workshop um, with the library next Thursday where you can learn how to do backyard composting with one of the community coaches from the nonprofit Green Beverly. Okay, very good. Well, with that, Mayor Mike, thank you. And Thanks. Irina Keefe, who is the uh, sustainability director in the city of Beverly, thank you very much for this very educational program. And I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. Thank you for watching.